Halton police issued a statement on the arrest of a 72 year old man named Michael O'Grady, a former teacher at John T. Tuck Elementary School in Burlington. O'Grady was charged with sexual assault of a student dating back to an incident in 1982. To get a deeper understanding on historical sexual assaults and how these incidents like this can affect victims, reporter Melissa Candelaria re reached out to the Sexual Assault and Violence Intervention Services of Halton and has this report. Well, Jason, this really is such a sad story, but a very brave one. This woman coming forward years later, finally having the courage to report an incident that happened to her when she was a child in elementary school, her trust broken by someone she thought was safe. So I thought it was important that we interview Sylvia Samsa. She is the executive director with Savis of Halton. I spoke with her over Skype this morning. And sad to say it, Jason, we start our conversation off by Sylvia telling me that stories like this isn't unique. So thank you very much for having me on because I think it's a really important issue for everyone to know, for the public to know, for the community to know. This is this is very, very, very common where women survivors 20 years later, especially with a person in authority, a teacher, a priest, a coach, where all of a sudden um, those flashbacks or those memories come back or those memories have always been there. And the, the person has taken the courage, the very, very brave, brave step to say, you know what, I know what happened years ago and I was supposed to deal with it. It was supposed to be a little package but it still haunts me. So I think the courage it took for this person, because it happened about 30 years ago, and I see the teachers in their late 70s, um, to say, you know what, this is not okay. So I think it because she's she's not the only one. We know for sure that that this is not a sole assault. This is not a one-off. This, this is a sexual predator. And, you know, in the talking about that, you there's always these um, voices or these critics out there who say, why did it take so long? Why didn't you come forward when it happened? Can you get a sense of just through your work and even survivors you've spoken to? Um, can you give us a sense of why does it sometimes take that long for someone to come forward? There's the feelings of shame the feelings of that, uh, it was my fault. If only I hadn't done this, right? And also the the person who is the abuser uses very um, submissive ta tactics. Don't tell anybody, this is really special, this is between you and I. If you say anything, it'll happen to your siblings, I'll go after someone else in your family. So it, it's all these mixed up emotions where the young person where this has happened is feeling very conflicted. conflicted. Because on one hand, this person is as a person of authority, someone you're supposed to respect as someone, you know, respect your teachers, you know, whatever your teacher says, whatever the person authority says, you're supposed to abide by it. So all of a sudden, this person there, that trust has been broken and they're trying really hard to scramble in their head as to what's happened. And maybe they did try to say something or maybe they maybe try to approach something and they were totally dismissed. I've worked with young survivors who have said something and they've, they've been told that it's their imagination, that that's, there's no way that's possible. Now that was years ago and more and more survivors are being believed. But look at just what happened at University of Western Ontario where all the sexual assaults there were yet again on campus. And this is not the first time it's happened there where they're gonna again get, get a lot more women coming up talking about the fact of these assaults. So I think sexual assault is still seen as a dirty little secret and it's still seen as something that's still the survivor. Um, she did something or they did something to to get into the situation where they bear no responsibility. This is totally the person who's been the abuser. It's their responsibility. And you know, they have to stop. It's like, why do we keep talking about, you know, making sure that women are safe or people are safe in the streets? Let's educate our young men and our men, and I'm a, I'm a mother of a, child, of a son who I adore and is a very good man, right? And I'm so never put that as a blanket statement. But the fact that men, men have to learn when someone says no, first of all, don't do it in the first place. Just don't do it. Let's talk about Savis a little bit. For those that are watching right now who might be um, dealing with something similar, maybe even, uh, as you mentioned, some of the other survivors who haven't come forward yet in this particular incident, talk about Savis a little bit and what you provide. Sure, we provide a 24 hour, seven day a week uh, crisis line. So if someone at three o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning is, is, has had those, you know, is, is had an assault just happen or had, we, we worked with many women, many survivors who, who talk about 
the historical sexual assault. We are there to, to provide support. We're there to have a, um, you know, sort of look at other referrals, look at accompaniment. We also have um, staff who are counselors who do one-to-one -one work with women and also do group work. Um, we also work with male survivors, of course, because that's often been the group that people have, you know, sort of forgotten about. But let's not forget about male survivors because they have had a lot of trauma in their lives. So we provide, as I said, wraparound services. We will do accompaniments. We will do accompaniments to Nina's place. We will work with women if they want to charge and, and go to the police. So really looking at, at a service that is comprehensive and supporting survivors um, in all the realms of what they had to do in terms of trying to figure out what to do next. That was Sylvia Samsa, the executive director with Savis of Halton. And again, if you are watching this and are a victim of sexual assault or know somebody who is and wants some support, you can call the Savis of Halton 24 hour hotline. It's confidential and anonymous. The number is 875 1555 or you can call the toll-free number at 1-877-268-8416.